Hey guys, Mark Zoll here, welcome to the channel and welcome to part two of my uh, six week recovery video. I recommend if you haven't seen part one, go check it out, it's on my channel where I focus on how I felt during week one, two and three after my kidney transplant. And in this video, part two, I focus on weeks four, five and six and I show you how much progress I've made and some of the good things that happened during the last three weeks and some of the bad things that happened as well. So let's get into the video and I hope you enjoy it. So at the start of week four, this is when I had my greatest creatinine spike since my transplant. So my creatinine had been slowly creeping up by the end of week three and then week four, it went up to 177. Um, so this was of great concern. So they invited me back into hospital again. So this was the second time I was being readmitted since my transplant. Um, again, feeling very, very low because of this. And then once I was in hospital, they decided to perform a biopsy to try and see exactly what was happening with the, uh, the kidney. Um, if you're not quite sure what a biopsy is, I do have a video on my channel showing the process of what I went through when I did have my biopsy, so I can leave a link uh, at the bottom for you to check that out. But what they did is they performed this biopsy and um, they found that it was showing signs of rejection. So rejection is obviously the worst case scenario. No one who's had a transplant wants to hear the word rejection. And unfortunately for me, four weeks in, my kidney was showing signs of rejection. Um, I did go into the reasons why in the other biopsy video, so do please check it out. But there wasn't much else that happened during this week because I spent four, five days in hospital um, because of this biopsy and they were trying to figure out what was wrong with it and why it was showing signs of rejection. So I spent another week in hospital, I was just eating um, what I could in hospital, drinking what I could in hospital. I was able to move around a bit more in the hospital this week because obviously I was a lot more active than I was a couple of weeks back. But it was just another week of monitoring why my kidney um, was showing signs of rejection. So physically for week four, uh, the pins and needles sensation that I was speaking about before has completely gone now. So I had obviously moved around enough for my body to start adjusting itself to what was uh, going on down there. So that had completely gone. I was still being very, very tired. So I was in hospital for four, four or five days, I think for this biopsy. So I wasn't able to sleep that much still because I was in hospital. But I was moving around hospital a bit more freely this time. I was, it was easier for me to go to the toilet, easy for me to have a wash because I wasn't in so much pain as I was in the previous week. Um, but then what did happen to me is I started to develop these really, really bad headaches, almost migraines, I would say. Um, we didn't really know why at the time. It turned out that my tacrolimus, my, um, one of my anti-rejection drugs was a bit too high. So I had too much tacrolimus in my system and it was causing these really, really bad headaches. Very, very common to happen after a kidney transplant because they're still trying to find the right level for you. But these headaches would last from two in the afternoon until literally I fell asleep in, at the end of the day. Paracetamol wasn't helping. Um, resting in a dark room, having lots of water was the only thing that could almost soothe it in a way, but it, it, did, it always stayed until I fell asleep. And then when I woke up in the morning, sometimes they even lingered in the next morning as well. And I was also in a bit of pain where they had performed my biopsy. So because they were doing a biopsy on my transplanted kidney, it's at the front of my body now. Usually I've had biopsies for my um, other kidneys, they go in at the back. So this one was at the front and I was, there was a lots of pain from when they put the needle into the kidney to get the sample that they needed. Even when I went home, maybe four or five days after the biopsy, I was still in pain from that as well. So I did have to take some paracetamol to um, control that. So physically week four, still a bit tired, a tiny bit of pain, but that's because I had a biopsy. I don't think I would have been in pain if I didn't have the biopsy. And these headaches that, I, that came about during this week as well, they weren't very comfortable either. So emotionally for week four, um, it's, it's changed again from week three. So week three, I was very down, very low, uh, not feeling too great about myself. And then week four, I was almost worried now, more worried than anything else. I was worried that my kidney wasn't gonna, was gonna be rejected. I was worried that my results weren't gonna get any better. I was worried that I was gonna keep having to get called back into hospital. And then you've got all these worries going through your head and you're just, you're just hoping and praying and wishing that something gets better soon. And like I said before, I, was, I thought personally I was doing everything I could to look after myself. I was resting, drinking lots of water, trying to eat as much as I could, doing everything that the doctors had told me and I was still showing these signs of rejection. So it was very, very worrying for me because I didn't know what else I could do to help the process. And you do feel helpless in a way sometimes and that's exactly how I felt during week four. So even after the biopsy results and the fact that we'd found something and my doctors had put a plan going forward to get rid of it, 
I still wasn't very, very positive about it. I was still very worried, still very anxious, and just almost hoping that this plan that we'd put moving forward was gonna work. So week five was the first week that I managed to stay at home for the entire week without having to go back into hospital for any bad reasons, so that's good. I was still going to the hospital twice a week to get checked, uh, every st every, still every Monday and Thursday. And uh, during this week, I also had my staples removed from my um, surgery. That made me feel really, really good because I could be a bit more comfortable when I was lying around in bed and walking around the house. And I was able to walk around the house a bit more. I had a bit more energy, um, still feeling tired throughout the day, but you just need to know to take it easy and rest when you can. But I was still, I was able to uh, help cook and help clean around the house, um, which was a lot, lot better than it was for the previous uh, four weeks. So physically, like I said, I had lots more energy during this week. I was able to walk around the house a bit more and help out. Uh, I was also sleeping a lot better because I had my staples removed now, I didn't have any dressings on them. I was able to get into a bit more comfier positions. All my um, scars and my scabs from all my cannulas had healed, so they weren't itching me or anything as well. So I was able to get into a lot more comfier positions in bed, able to sleep a bit more, and that gave me a bit more energy to do things as well. I was still suffering from these really, really bad headaches, but they were slightly different now. So I think the headaches before were because of my chacrolimus, there were levels being too high. And now these headaches were slightly different and it's, I think it's more to do with my steroids that they've started me on to help with the signs of rejection. So steroids are very, very powerful drugs and they have, these they have tons of side effects. Um, one being headaches and that's what I think I started to suffer from in week five. And they followed the exact same pattern as my other ones. They would come late on in the afternoon and then stay with me all the way until I fell asleep and then sometimes linger until the next morning as well. Uh, and because of all the other medication I'm taking, you can only take paracetamol to deal with it. So it wasn't really helping at all. Um, but again, just get into a dark room, um, try, to, try to relax and just try to keep calm and try to get some sleep. I also started to put on a bit of weight this week and this is probably mainly because of the steroids that I started uh, to help with the signs of rejection. Steroids are very powerful, like I said, and one of the other side effects is that they extract sugars from the food more effectively and stick it straight onto your body and then you end up putting on a extra, bit of extra weight. And because you're not very active, you're still laying in bed for most of the day, it ends up just sticking to you and you end up just putting on a bit more weight. It's not that much of an issue because you know you can lose it once you've got off the steroids, um, but it probably will happen to you or if anyone else you know that's on steroids, and it's just something that you need to expect. So in week six, uh, week six started off with me getting my kidney stent removed or my uretinal stent removed. Um, I did have a, I do have a video on my channel showing what happened during the procedure and how it felt. So if you do want to check that out, I'll put the link down below for you as well. Um, and after that, getting, getting that removed, I did feel a lot, lot better. I was almost telling myself throughout the weeks when I get my staples removed and my dressings removed and my stent removed, I can start to be a bit more active now because the, I almost felt like there was nothing holding me back. So in this week, I managed to go shopping food shopping, um, nothing too exciting, just walking around Tesco buying some food, but it felt good. It had, I hadn't done it for six weeks. I hadn't been out the house for six weeks to do anything. And I finally had enough energy uh, to go out and go shopping. Uh, I also went to get my hair cut as well. So it's just these, it's just these tiny little achievements and these baby steps that come along that make you feel really good about yourself. It makes you feel like you've improved, your health is improving and you're able to almost start to live your normal life again. So don't take these little baby steps for granted. They, they do mean a lot and um, it's good when they do happen. And most of mine started to happen during this week six for me. So physically in week six, um, as I just said, I had lots more energy during week six. Um, it was the longest period I spent at home um, since my transplant. So from week five all the way into week six. And I was able to do a lot more around the house. So I was cooking even more. I am the chef of the house. I love cooking. So that was something I missed a lot. Um, I was able to shower by myself as well. Cause up till now, um, I wasn't able really to stand up for that often. I'd feel a bit dizzy. So I had, I had been sitting um, in the bath and having my wife help me. But this was the first time that I was able to stand up, shower by myself, drive myself, get dressed by myself. And again, it's another tiny achievement that you feel really good about after you've done it. Um, and I was able to, I was planning on going for walks when I could. And like I said, in general, just feeling a lot more energetic, um, with a lot more energy, I was feeling, I, was, I felt like I was sleeping better as well, which all added to the, in, to the increase of, um, of energy, I think. So week six, how was I feeling emotionally? Well, it almost felt like I was coming to the end of a six week roller coaster of emotions. And I was finally now, everything was starting to finally settle down. I was getting on the right path and I was, going onto a path that I'll be able to be on for quite some time now, 
with this uh, medicine that I started for my rejection and I could see where I was going. It's almost like for the first six weeks I almost, I was almost lost and walking around in the dark not knowing where this was leading. Whereas now I can see the plan that the doctors have for me, I can see where I need to get to and I know even more than I did before what I have to do to get there. So I think I've learned a lot over the last six weeks uh, mainly that you can you always have to expect that you're going to take two steps forward then one step back but your general direction is always going to be positive you're always going to be moving forward um, the doctors look after you so well the medication you're on works so well for you you just need to be confident and be positive that what you're doing is good for you and you'll always end up in a better place the one thing another thing that I really learned this week is that stress is such a big factor such such a big factor even though I've got this thing going on with my health, which is by far the most important thing to me right now, there's life that goes on around you as well. You still have issues to deal with that aren't to do with you and you have stresses that are stressing you out as well. And I did as well for this whole six weeks. It wasn't just my health that was stressing me out. There was other things stressing you out as well. And the thing that I learned is you have to be selfish. Your, your health is so important and it's such a critical time after your operation. You have to look after yourself before you try to put out the rest of these other fires. And that's a really big lesson that I learned throughout this whole six weeks. Try your best to make sure that you're okay before you start to deal with anything else. Because otherwise there's no point. There's no point you're going through this life-saving surgery. There's no point someone donating their kidney to you if you're just gonna turn your attention to something else. And we're all, we're all, it, it's all, it's hard for us to be selfish sometimes, very, very hard. But this is one of those times where you have to be selfish, you have to look after yourself and put yourself first. Otherwise, your health can be very, very badly affected. So overall, how have these last six weeks been? They have been the hardest six weeks of my life, guaranteed. And for most people out there, they will experience the same hardship that I have and it will be their worst six weeks of their life as well. But the overriding emotion and feeling that I've got is that it's going to be a hard six weeks, two months, six months, whatever it's going to be. You have to go through that hard time to experience the 20, 30, 40 plus years that you are going to get added onto your life because of your kidney donation. And that's what you need to remind yourself. You're looking after yourself now in the short term so that your long-term health can be as best as it possibly can. And yes, I've missed out on things that I would love to be doing. I'm such a exercise freak. I wanna go running and do lots of different things and I can't do that yet. And that does frustrate me, but I know I'm gonna be able to do that and do it better than I ever have done before because of, the, because of my, my new kidney. And that's what I need to keep reminding myself. Um, so yes, a very, very hard six weeks. Um, I know it's gonna get better. I need to keep looking after myself, make sure that, as I said before, be a little bit selfish, make sure you're on top of all your medication, make sure you're listening to your doctors and make sure that you get everyone around you to understand as much as they possibly can about what you're going through. Because otherwise you'll be feeling like you're by yourself. Everyone else will feel like they know enough to help you. And at the end of the day, no one knows enough because you haven't told them how you feel. So I'm hoping the next six weeks are less chaotic than the first six weeks. Um, I, I, I'm guessing they will be, but you never know. So be prepared to take the good with the bad, um, but remember that wherever you're, whatever you're doing, you'll always end up in a better place than you are right now. And that's it guys, that's my six weeks. That's what's been happening since my transplant. Uh, it's been an emotional ride, as you can probably tell. I think I've almost remembered all the emotions as I've told you guys. It's, it's helped me a lot because it helps you break down things and you remember how you were feeling now and how you were feeling then and how you can, can compare it because otherwise it's all just one big mess of a six week roller coaster and you almost forget what you went through. So it's been helpful for me telling you guys and I really hope it's been helpful for you listening. Uh, and if it is you or going through this process or if it's someone you know, then do please try to educate them as much as you can. Like, I just want to tell you my story because if there was someone that was able to say what I'm saying before I had my transplant, I think I would feel a lot more comfortable. Um, that's what my plan is, that's what my goal is, and that's what I hope I'm, I hope I'm doing with these videos. Um, so 
I thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you did like the video, please leave me a thumbs up. I've got loads of other videos to check out on my channel at the moment. Do please head over there and find, uh, find them on the rest of my, um, I've got playlist made for you guys, I think. And share this video around. If you do know anyone who's experiencing anything like this, please do share it. Let's try and get uh, this, um, this knowledge out there for everyone to see. And um, I'll try and make as many more videos for you as I can, explaining as much as I can for you. If there's any questions or anything you want me to go through on my channel, please leave me a comment down below and I'll try my best to make a video about it. Uh, but other than that, I'll see you on the next video and thank you all so much for watching.